people want to know if you understand the gridlock and what's causing it. Excessive political polarization in Washington today is preventing us from tackling our problems. Wildman Pictures ventured across the nation to Idaho and Montana in order to document a fresh type of advocacy, one that is unifying rather than divisive. Historically, the relationship between wilderness and industry has been characterized by conflict and a lack of common ground. The story they found surrounding the efforts to conserve a proposed wilderness was a different type of politics altogether a politics built upon consensus and communities coming together in support of conservation and sustainable development. Welcome to Idaho and Montana and to the evolving story of the campaign to protect the Scotchman Peaks, led by the Friends of Scotchman Peaks Wilderness and a growing group of supporters. non-governmental organizations run. We have disparate political agendas in this county, just like everywhere else in the U.S. But here is an organization that transcends politics. We have a single focus, and when we first formed, we intentionally had that single focus. This has been eye-opening to see how this works, how a representative democracy works on the ground for an issue that you're interested in. Spanning the Idaho and Montana border, the Scotchmans are one of the last and largest wild areas in the region. If you've never been into or seen the Scotchmans firsthand, we will take you there. This designation requires an act of Congress. Congressmen will tend to work on something that they think their constituents want. So it's important we develop a broad consensus or broad public support. To protect an area as a wilderness, you have to get the community to support it. And that's exactly what the Friends of Scotch and Peaks Wilderness have done. Building consensus, I guess, would be the best way to, to describe uh, what what we do, we, we try to get people involved on grassroots level um, who want to see this become wilderness. We wanted people who didn't ordinarily join movements or organizations or groups to be supporters of ours. There's no loyalty oath involved in this. This is all about Scotchman's Peak. I think it makes the group bigger than it otherwise would be if you start focusing in on some side issues. We're all in the Friends of Scotchman's Peak, but we're in it for different reasons. The Friends have not only garnered a network of support from across the community, they've also achieved an exceptional level of commitment from a growing group of volunteers. Uh, here, for example, we're working on a trail project um, it's for the federal government, again, the Forest Service, but the people that have signed up for this uh, have a wide variety of different occupations, come from different areas, both from Montana and from Idaho. The American people want bipartisanship. They want people working together, finding common ground, finding real solutions. And when it comes to wilderness, that's no different. 
In order to build a broad coalition of support, the Friends have reached out to non-traditional advocates of wilderness, including Idaho Forest Group, the lead purchaser of national forest timber in northern Idaho. I've been in the industry 42 years, so I've been in the, what they call the timber wars where everyone was fighting and nothing was getting done on the ground. But I think the Friends of the Scotchman's leadership is thoughtful and statesmanlike, and, and it was clear to me they wanted to understand what my interests were, explain what their interests were, and I think that laid the groundwork for a good working relationship. If people see that, hey, environmentalists and the timber industry have some common ground or are actually agreeing on a lot of things instead of fighting on a lot of things, then they want to take a look at that and, and say, you know, maybe we should get on board and support this as well. The relationship between the Friends and the Troy Mine, located on the border of the proposed wilderness, also stands as a rare example of collaboration between wilderness and mining, two groups historically at odds with one another. Uh, we're standing basically on top of Mount Vernon. I was proud to grow up in the shadow of the Cabinet Mountain wilderness. I treasure both the economic value of development in this valley and the preservation of these areas for the future. Brevet Minerals nor the Friends of the Scotchman's Peak are out on the polar ends of the argument about development versus wilderness. We've seen the opportunity to sit down face to face and talk about what we agree on rather than the things that we don't agree on. As long as all of the interests are, are addressed, you know, those of building a community uh, through an economic development, uh, preserving these special areas like the cabinets and the Scotchmans for future generations, that can all be done hand in hand. Revet's made a commitment. We are going to try to leave a net positive impact when we're finished. I think they both have seen that it's much more beneficial if they work collaboratively together and find a common ground that they both can work toward. We're focused solely on the Scotchman Peaks and our efforts are focused solely on the Scotchman Peaks. But by engaging people who have not before been interested in conservation or natural resource protection, we know that we're changing the way that they look at conservation. New organizations come to the forefront that develop the clout to where they can speak to a congressman and they listen. To have a local community-based organization that supports the protection of a particular area, you just can't beat that. Perhaps this will be the start of something in the future where we can share with other associated groups as to why we think that this kind of collaboration can be meaningful and long-lasting. Through discussions and, and talking and collaborating, I think the better solutions will be thought out and come up with and get broader support and have a better likelihood of implementation. It's something that I'll be proud to have been associated with and having come from here, this is a special place for me. At the moment when people start to internalize the idea and it starts to move from here's a couple people doing something to here's the community doing something, that's the moment of change. And the Scotchman's is right at that tipping point.